LawsMarketplace.com, the site where the tribes unite. Check out fresh Israelite apparel for both men and women, with new items added frequently. Don't forget to join the marketplace so you can promote your own products and services. Kwam Yasha Ali. Shalom family. The soul food topic on tonight is you prove you believe when you can obey. Okay. There are many of our people that say they believe this truth. They say that they believe in the most high God. They say that they believe that Christ is black. They believe that we are the Israelites. They say they believe with their mouth, but their actions don't line up. Their actions certainly do not line up. But when you seek to reprove them and show them, brother, look, you need to get yourself in order. You know, you need to repent. You truly need to put away this carnal lifestyle and start to keep the commandments and do the will of God for real, for real. You know, their response is, you know, I, I believe. I believe, you know, I'm not all the way there, but I believe, you know. And they they uh, chalk that up as to being like semi-saved or semi uh, repented and, 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 and living the life, but they're not. Okay. You have to demonstrate your belief through obedience. Okay. So we're going to show that in scripture. Can't just say it with our mouth. We got to live it out with action and with deed and sincerity and truth before the most high God. Okay. So first scale, I have you go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31 verses 27 and 29. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verses 27 and 29. Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 27. For I know their rebellion, excuse me. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against Yahweh. And how much more after my death? So, Laki, so this is our great ancestors in the wilderness in a time where Moses was drawing to the end of his life. And he was charging the congregation of Israel concerning what was required of them of the Most High God and some of what would happen and befall them in the latter days because of their known rebellion. This wasn't something that wasn't a one off. This was a common occurrence among our ancestors wherein they experienced the exodus, they experienced the power of God through plagues and wonders upon Egypt and freeing them out of bondage and bringing them into the wilderness and where they conquered their enemies and where the Most High provided for them in the midst of a, a, a desolate, barren wilderness, the Most High God was good unto them, but they still rebelled. They still rebelled. And so Moses was testifying unto the children of Israel, look, you, you broke the commandments when I was alive. How much more when I'm gone? How much more when I'm gone? Read. Verse 29. For I know that after my death, ye will utterly corrupt yourselves. And so, Salaki, so there, I am the only buffer between obedience, I say obedience with quotations, and utter rebellion. Utter lawlessness. I am the only buffer. Once I'm removed out of the way and I pass from this life, there's not there's not going to stand anyone to to correct you and to guide you and lead you. For Moses was well beloved among the people. Yes, they murmured and complained. Yes, there was insurrection. There were men who stood up to oppose Moses, but by and large, Moses was greatly beloved before the people. And a lot of the, the, the priests and, and Joshua as well and many other leaders that stood up were, were beloved of the people, but not like it unto Moses. But he's, he understands that I'm the only buffer that has kept you all these 40 years from going totally, utterly astray. Okay? But when I die, y'all going to let it all hang loose. Okay? Read. Verse 29. For I know that after my death, ye will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. 
and evil will befall you in the latter days mm. because you will do evil in the sight of Yahweh to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. What was that? 29. Do you want 27 to 29? Oh, you said do? You just no. said 27 in the comments. Yes. So mm. did you just do 27 and 29? Yes. Okay. All right. From there, I want you to grab Exodus chapter 24, verse 7. Exodus chapter 24, verse 7. So you see that Moses charged the people saying, look, you better get it together. Once I die, I know you're going to go off. I know you're going to go off. Read. Exodus chapter 24 and 7. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the that Yahweh have said we will do and be obedient. Okay. So I brought up Deuteronomy first. Because I want to show how our ancestors disobeyed and went went aside from the covenant um, promise that they made or oath that they made before the Most High God. So again, the topic is you prove you believe when you obey. Moses, towards the end of his life, towards the end of the wilderness wandering, testified to the people that the Most High showed me, when I die, you're going to go a, go a whoring. You're going to go after other gods in the latter days. You're going to be afflicted because of these things. Okay? But we brought out an exodus that, and this was towards the, the, the beginning of the wilderness wandering, that Moses sprinkled the blood. He opened up the book of the law, read it before the people, and sprinkled the blood and made a covenant. Okay? He was as the, uh, he was made proxy between the Most High God and the children of Israel. Moses stood as proxy to bind the covenant between two parties, okay? And the people sealed this covenant, sealed this promise, this spiritual transaction by saying, amen, or yes, we will obey. But then you see in Deuteronomy that Moses is testifying that you broke this covenant already. You sinned and have rebelled against the Most High God, and you're only going to break it the more once I die. Read verse 7 again in, in uh, Exodus 24. Exodus 24 and 7. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, all that Yahweh has said will we do and be obedient. So the people with their mouths declared their belief. But they didn't wholeheartedly demonstrate their belief. Your belief is demonstrated through obedience. They said everything that the Most High God has declared we will do and be obedient. But they were not. Not wholeheartedly. Not as a nation. They rebelled countless times throughout their wilderness uh, wanderings. So like you from there. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 1 verses 31 and 32. Because we're dealing with our ancestors, okay? Those who saw the wonders and powers of God, okay? Because many will say that if I lived during that time, if I was able to behold that, you know, I would obey and I would do... No, you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. No, you wouldn't. That very testimony or that very statement testifies that you're disobedient. You're saying that you need a miracle from heaven in order for you to obey the voice of God? Why can't you simply obey the voice of God? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 31 and 32. And in the wilderness where thou hast seen how that Yahweh thy king bare thee, as a man doth bear his son, and all the way that ye went until you came into this place. Yet in this thing ye did not believe Yahweh your king. Hold it right there. So the Most High God bore up Israel as a father doth a son. And, 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 and took you by the hand to, to guide you and instruct you in the way. But as a child who throws a temper tantrum, you went against the, the instruction of your father. 
of our heavenly father. What was the latter part of that scripture you just read? Yet in this thing, ye did not believe Yahweh your king. Or the yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just read the rest of that. Verse 31. And in the wilderness where thou hast seen how that Yahweh thy king bare thee as a man doth bear his son in all the way that ye went until you came into this place. Yet in this thing, ye did not believe Yahweh your king. Okay. So, um, our ancestors, they wandered. The Most High God protected them and kept them and blessed them and set them up for success, but they refused to obey the Most High God and they believed not the Most High God. They believed not they beheld the miracles, they beheld the wonders, they beheld the hand of God in their lives, but they believed not. That didn't phase them. Okay, let's move on. Psalms chapter 78 verses 5 through 11, 17 and 18 and 22. And when you read, can you give me the scripture? I don't have my Bible, so I need to know what you're reading, what scripture. Psalms 78 verses 5 through 11. So Psalm 78, verse 5 through 11. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, uh -huh. that, that the generations who come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. Verse 7 that they might set their hope in Yahweh and not forget the works of Yahweh, but keep his commandments. Verse 8, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with Yahweh. So, Lachia, so again, in Psalms, you're seeing the conduct of our ancestors. They wandered through the wilderness. They were led of Moses, a righteous, meek man. Okay, they were given the commandments and testimonies of God. Okay, they saw the power of God. They saw the miracles. They saw the wonders, but they rebelled still. They rebelled still. Exodus 24 and 7, the people said, amen. They agreed. They said, all that the Most High God has declared unto us, we will do and be obedient. But time and time again, we're seeing, whether it be Deuteronomy 31 or Psalm 78 here, that our ancestors rebelled. They rebelled. They went against their own word. They said they would be obedient, but they were not obedient. They were disobedient. Read on. Verse 9. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, bows, Turn back in the day of battle. They kept not the covenant of Yahweh and refused to walk in his law. Mm. Verse 11. And forget his works and his wonders that he had showed them. Um, verse 17 through 18. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. Salaki, so... Our ancestors not only turned back on their own word and rebelled, but they showed what spirit they, they, they walked in. They walked in the spirit of rebellion. This wasn't a one-off thing. This wasn't a moment of weakness where they were in the flesh and did something they shouldn't have done and walked in disobedience. But when, they continue, when you continue to do something, you're showing this is who you are. This is who you are. You're not an obedient individual who made a mistake. You're a disobedient individual. You have a lifestyle and a and a way a, a way of life that is against the most high God. You don't seek to do his will, but transgress his commandments by doing your own thing. And this is what our ancestors were doing time and time and time again. Moses testified towards the end of his life. Look. Y'all already rebelled countless times. How much more when I die? 
but the Most High God going to punish you because you made a covenant agreement with him. When I opened up the book and read it to you and you agreed and I sprinkled the blood, it sealed the covenant. But you broke it once, twice, three times, four times, countless times. And you're going to be punished in the latter days concerning these things. The Most High God don't want to hear your words. He heard your words already. He wants to see action. He wants to see a lifestyle change. Read. Verse 18. And they tempted Yahweh in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Mm. And verse 22. Because they believed not in Yahweh and trusted not in his salvation. They trusted not in his salvation. They did not believe. They did not believe. You're there in the company of your brethren, the Israelites, the ones in whom the, the people that the Most High God had chosen above all the nations of the earth. He set his love on you. He bore you up on eagle's wings. As a father does his son, he, he, he cared for you, intended to you. The scripture says that their feet did not wear out, their clothes didn't, Right? They were kept and protected. When they thirst, the Most High God provided drink. When they hungered, the Most High God provided food, manna. Even when they lusted for meat, the Most High God provided meat. Gave them no excuse to, to walk in disbelief. But they still believe not his salvation. Read 22 one more time. Because they believe not in Yahweh and trusted not in his salvation. Trusted not in his salvation. How do you trust not in his salvation? Because, you know, like I said, many people will say, I believe, I believe. I believe. But when you trust not in salvation, that shows that you are dis... Di I'm, I'm sorry. That sh when you trust not in the salvation, that shows disbelief. And that disbelief comes about through disobedience. When you believe something, you're going to obey. You're going to follow. You're going to manifest your belief through your actions and through your deeds. Okay? If you believe something with all your heart, you're going to show it. You're going to show that you believe. But if you say with your mouth that you believe, but your conduct and your actions are contrary, then I can't believe your words. I can't believe your words. Okay? Gail, can you grab me now? Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 through 31. Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 through 31. Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 through 31. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. Okay. And he came to the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. And he went and went not. Sorry. Whether of them twain did the will of his father, they say unto him, the first, Yahweh saith unto them, verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of Yah before you. So this is a very important parable that Christ taught the disciples. The parable of the two sons, okay? Where, where the father spoke to his two sons separately and said, you know, this is my will for you. This is what I will want you to do. The first son said, I'll do it, right? Speaking with his mouth. But he went his way and did not do what his father asked. The other told his father plainly, I'm not doing it but later repented of his words and went and did the will of his father. The first son is like, you know, the first son is like uh, our ancestors. Like in Exodus 24, when, the, when Moses opened up the book and sprinkled the blood 
our ancestors said, amen, yes, we will do it. Whatever the Most High God says, we'll do it, we'll be obedient. But then lo and behold, they're not being um, diligent to obey and to keep his commandments. They said one thing, but they did another thing. They're a hypocrite. We want to be obedient to keep the commandments of God and show forth our, our belief through our obedience. Mm -hmm. Not as the worthless son who simply says in the presence of his father, you know, I will do as thou asked. And then lo and behold, he doesn't do anything. We don't want to be that way. We want to obey the voice of the Most High God through, through obey him through following through. Show our belief through the actions we perform. Okay? Was that the 31? Mm-hmm. All right, last scripture. James chapter 4, verse 17. James chapter 4, verse 17. Okay. James chapter 4, verse 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not... To him it is sin. To him it is sin. So again, this is for individuals who say they believe. Say that, you know, I, I, I believe this, this truth. I walk this life. If you say you're doing it, but you not, if your life does not testify to it, you're a liar. You're a hypocrite. You're not really about this thing. You're not really about this thing. You, Those are just vain words, empty words. They mean nothing. They mean nothing to man. They mean nothing to God. Read, read the verse again one more time. Verse um, chap, James chapter 4, verse 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good. Salakia, this is for the individuals that say they believe this truth. You sat in and heard the lessons. You hear the precepts being brought out. You say you believe that we the Israelites. So you know what's required of you. Just like our ancestors. They were there and it was the book was open and it was read before them. And they raised their hands and said, yes, we obey. You know to do good, but you don't. But you profess with your mouth that you're obedient. You profess that you believe. Your words don't mean anything. When we read in, in Psalms, the latter part of chapter uh, uh, 78, where it says that they believe not in the Most High God and follow that into his salvation, it wasn't because they didn't say the right thing, because they didn't do the right thing. It wasn't disbelief because they spoke in disbelief. It was disbelief because they did not obey. We, we need to really see this thing. It's not about just lip service to the Most High God. It's about manifesting righteous works. Read 17 one more time. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. It is sin. Because you know the righteous way, but you have failed to walk in it. Okay. So you're going to leave it right there and finish the rest another time. Shalom.